name is Kathy, and today I'll be discussing how to use homeopathic remedies on ailments, continuing with infections, infestations, and the immune system, starting with the letter B4, part 4, bacterial throat. But before I do this, I wanted to let you know that because I have a great many videos now on many different topics, that I've decided to make several different video playlists so that it's easy to find the videos of greatest interest. So please check out my playlist page. Please refer to my How to Use Homeopathic Remedies video before using the material in this video. I'll be discussing how to use homeopathic remedies on specific ailments, but I've broken these ailments into categories for easier reference. I'll begin with ailments of the mind and emotions, then I'll move on to ailments of the brain and nervous system. Then I'll address issues with your skin, nails, hair, ears, eyes, nose, teeth, gums, lungs, respiration, heart, blood, circulation, muscles, bones, joints, esophagus, stomach, duodenum, small and large intestine, liver, gallbladder, pancreas, kidney, bladder, then ailments specific to women and specific to men, then issues of the hormones and the metabolism and the immune system, then issues surrounding fertility, pregnancy, childbirth, postnatal problems, um, problems, special problems in infants, ailments and diseases in childhood, and special issues of adolescence, and finally, special issues of the elderly. Constitutional treatment involves treating the totality of the individual person. Everyone is a unique individual with a unique physiology that responds to substances differently. In homeopathy, it is recognized that people react strongly to certain remedies, and as a result of this, they can be loosely placed into different categories called constitutional types. Homeopaths talk of, for example, phosphoric types. These are people who react strongly to phosphorus, or arsenic amalgam types, those who react strongly to arsenic amalgam. The belief is the people of one type share similarities in terms of body shape, character, and personality, and the sorts of diseases from which they suffer. As an example, nature mere people tend to be pear-shaped, have a tart complexion, be fastidious and rigid in personality, and keep themselves to themselves. They also crave salt and suffer from constipation. As another example, lycopodium types tend to be tall, gangly, and of a stooped appearance, with an anxious expression and a craving for sweets and a propensity to produce intestinal gas. Now, of course, constitutional types have their limitations. In reality, each person is an individual, and so there are as many constitutional types as there are human beings, and an account must be taken of the sum total of the person's inherent predispositions, past illnesses, diet general reactions to the environment, intellectual and emotional features, and general attitude towards life. This is what is meant by constitutional treatment. I'll be making detailed videos of the various constitutional types after I've completed the use of homeopathic remedies on ailments. The ideas, procedures, and suggestions in this video and all my homeopathic videos are not intended as a substitute for the medical advice of a trained health professional. Consult your physician before adopting the suggestions in this video. If you're pregnant, do not attempt these techniques without the approval of your physician. So, let us continue with learning how homeopathic treatments can help with infections, infestations, and the immune system, starting with the letter B, part 4. Four, bacterial throat. Infections are an almost daily occurrence, but if we are healthy, our immune systems deal with them before we notice any symptoms. Most microorganisms enter the body through the nose and mouth, in the air, in our food, sometimes on dirty fingers. Some enter through cuts and abrasions, while others invade the urinary or reproductive tract through the urethra or vagina. Many of the microorganisms with which we share this planet are harmless. Some permanently inhabit the inside and outside of the human body. A few even produce substances useful to it and prevent harmful bacteria from finding a foothold. This is true of certain bacteria in the large intestine and vagina. Some bacteria are harmless in one part of the body but damaging in others. This is true of E. coli which is benign while it is in the colon or rectum, but harmful if it is transferred to the urethra, vagina, or mouth. Each kind of microorganism, whether it is bacterium, virus, fungus, or blood parasite, carries special chemical markers known as antigens. 
Some strains of lymphocyte, which is a kind of white blood cell produced in the lymph nodes, spleen, bone marrow, adenoids, tonsils, and the wall of the gut, recognize antigens and stimulate other lymphocytes to produce proteins called antibodies, which then disable the carrier organism. Other lymphocytes directly attack and destroy the invading organism. For about six months after birth, babies are protected by their mother's antibodies. After that, the immune system is sufficiently mature to start manufacturing its own. Homeopathic immunization excuse me, homeopathic immunization does not involve introducing live or dead viruses or antibodies into the body. Instead, remedies are prepared from diseased tissues or secretions using the traditional dilution and succession method. Like other homeopathic remedies, they contain in highly potent form the essence of the source material used. In this case, the essence of the diseased organism or its toxin. The body's reaction to such remedies, known as nosodes, by sharpening its immune response. The production of antibodies in response to antigens, the so-called immune response, is not the body's only line of defense. The body's first line troubleshooters are neutrophils and macrophages, phages, which are two kinds of white blood cells that constantly patrol the bloodstream and tissue fluids and respond immediately to the chemical and thermal signals sent out by tissues when they become inflamed. If inflammation is suppressed, white cell activity is impaired. Neutrophils and macrophages gobble up and digest offending microbes, foreign particles and other noxious elements. The resulting pus is a mixture of necrotic tissue, dead bacteria and dying white blood cells. Infections can be treated by killing the germ that causes them or by helping the immune system to deal with them, or both, depending on general health and the virulence of the infection. Traditional antibiotics can deal with bacteria, but not viruses. After a course of antibiotics, live yogurt or kefir eaten daily for about five days helps to repopulate the gut with beneficial bacteria that the antibiotics have killed along with the harmful bacteria that was their main target. Homeopathic remedies, improved nutrition, fresh air, exercise and rest can restore the coping ability of the immune system. In some cases, homeopathic remedies and antibiotics used together may be necessary. Constitutional homeopathic treatment is always advisable after serious infections. Occasionally, as a result of aging or exposure to certain viruses, bacteria, chemicals, and environmental factors, the body loses some of its ability to discriminate between self and non-self, or fails to recognize and destroy its own abnormal cells. The first kind of impairment leads to autoimmune diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis and systemic lupus. The second leads to cancer. Allergies, distressing reactions to certain drugs, chemicals, foods, and other substances that seem to be tolerated by the majority people are the downside of having an immune system. Homeopathic remedies for bacterial infections affecting the throat. The main offend offending bacterial agent behind the throat infection is the streptococcus bacteria. It leads to a condition known as strep throat. The th symptoms of strep throat include pain in the throat, difficulty in swallowing, headache, fever, red and inflamed throat and tonsils. Pus points are noted on the tonsils in some cases. Tender lymph nodes in the neck are another sign of this infection. Strep throat is highly contagious and passes from one infected person to another through touch, cough, sneezes and, con and contain droplets of streptococcus pyrogenes bacteria. Homeopathic treatment for strep throat helps provide long-term relief from this condition. Specific remedies to be taken four times daily. For advanced stages of strep throat with highly inflamed swollen and enlarged tonsils, the throat is very dry and swallowing food and drinks is very painful. There is also a very high fever with headache. Use Belladonna 30C. For acute as well as chronic strep throat, the throat is red, swollen, painful with inflamed tonsils, 
and swollen and enlarged nodes in the neck. Use Streptococcum 6C. For very sore and raw throat, with the pain extending to the ears and excessive saliva with bad breath, use Merck Sol 6C. For pus points in the throat with a plug-like or splinter-like sensation in the throat, there is also loose rattling cough with yellow expectoration. Use Hepar Sulf 6C. For inflamed throat with heat and intense burning, the throat and tonsils are swollen and take on a dark red-purplish appearance with shooting pain extending to the ears with a lump in the throat and a constant desire to swallow. Use Phytolacca 6C. I have a great many videos now on many different topics and so I've decided to make several different video playlists so that it's easier to find the videos of greatest interest. So please check out my playlist page. Well, that's it for now. To stay up to date with my latest videos, make sure to subscribe to this free YouTube channel by clicking the red subscribe button right below this video. Take care.